Hey, it's Leanne from Pure Country sitting down with Corey Kent today. Corey, so nice to see you up here in Canada. Thank you. Uh, first time. What are your first thoughts, first impressions? Are we mean? Are we rude? You know, no. Not... I've, well, I feel like everyone here knows infinitely more about their city than like people where I'm from. Okay. Because I was getting all the stats from like, this is the friendliest city in North America and stuff like that. Did you know you got voted? Friendliest city in North America? I did yeah. not know that. Thank you. Whoever drove us. Tell you guys. Well, yeah, I know. I, I Whoever was driving us told us that. And um, But yeah, so far, everybody's been super kind to us, which, you know, I that's not always expected in certain cities. So this has been great. Uh, but it doesn't feel all that different, you know? Like, I've, I've been uh, to places where there's, like, language barrier, and obviously there's not that here. Only thing that I'm... You know, you guys got different coffee places, so I'm still getting used to that, you know. Um, what do you think of Tim Hortons so far? It was great. It was, I mean, <laughs> shoot, I, I like good coffee, and, I mean, it was good enough that I didn't have to put creamer or sugar in it. So, hey, I just, black coffee, If that's my that's my test, if, if you don't need to put cream or sugar in it, and it's good coffee. Okay, well, Tim Hortons, I think they just released a... A new merch line, so we'll get you outfit on. before you go home. I messed up. I called it Tom Holland earlier. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, Tom Canada. Holland. I'm sorry. He's a good-looking dude. Everybody likes him. I don't know. Maybe he needs to start a coffee line. I'd drink it. Now, before we get into music, your tour with Jason Aldean, I'm hoping you can settle a debate for me. This yeah. week is the first week of school up here in Canada. Okay. I want you to think about when you were in school, doing your back-to-school shopping, getting your binders. What color binder did you have for English class? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> my friends and I were talking. I don't know. English? Science had to be green. Math was blue. Maybe. You got to understand. I was raised in Bixby, Oklahoma. I'm not even sure they had binders for us. Like, we, I don't remember. I really don't. How, like, how old are we talking? I mean... I'm 30. You're 29. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, like, how old, how old, like, what grade are we talking about? Grade 11. What? No, they didn't make us have anything. Really? No. You no. Walked around with an empty backpack? Oh, well, no, we had a ton of books, but, like, they didn't, they weren't like, you need to have this. You guys are way more organized than we are. They were just like, if you fail, you fail, you know? But you guys, yeah. I think you're more organized. Okay. I like that. You did mention Bixby, Oklahoma, where you're from. Mm -hmm. uh, quick Google search, 30 minutes away from where Garth Brooks is from. Mm -hmm. What are the chances you're just driving around growing up and you pop into Walmart? You're not. Just bump into Garth Brooks. You're not going to believe this. So I know Garth because we both lived in Oklahoma. He was retired. Okay. And I remember being at, there's this place, uh, it's like a hibachi grill called Osaka in Tulsa. And... It Tulsa's the nearest town, like major town, to both where he's from and or where he lived and where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And um, I walked out of there. I was having dinner with my family, and I was maybe like 16. And I walked out, and there's this guy leaned over the hood of his truck, and I was like, Garth. And he was like, Oh, hey, buddy. You're like, What are you doing? And I was like, I just had dinner with my family. What are you doing? And he's like, This old truck broke down again. And he's out there. With water pouring, I mean, trying to, this is Garth Brooks. You could drive anything you want. And he's driving like a, you know, a, just an old farm truck. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had known him through some music stuff a couple years earlier is when we, we had met. But that's just the, one of the strangest moments of my life was walking <laughs> out of a restaurant and seeing Garth Brooks with his broken down truck and being like, hey, do you need anything? He's like. No, I'll be fine. I'll, I'll catch up with you later. And just walking off and leaving Garth in a parking lot. And it's Garth Brooks. He could call anybody he wanted to yeah. come help him out. No, he's just a regular dude. But what's really weird is that you asked about specifically him, and I had a weird specific no. story. Like, you could have asked me about any of the other Oklahoma, you know, Blake Shelton or Toby Keith or Car I wouldn't have had a story. But Garth specifically, just a random chance encounter Oklahoma's a good place for country artists by the sounds of it yeah I think it's like it, you gotta figure out something to not be bored in a place that's that flat you know so most <laughs> of us take up sports or music is is pretty much it 
Well, we're happy you took up music. And of course, you're here on your Jason Aldean or on the Jason Aldean tour right now. How has the tour been going so far? Oh, man. It's been it's been a dream come true. Like, I I grew up listening to that early Aldean stuff, and it was so influential in my music. It's like this perfect blend of rock and roll and country to me, mm -hmm. which is kind of the line that we tow as a band. Um, so it's been really cool just musically how, how aligned we are with Jason Aldean and his crew and how much we can learn from him as a result of that has been awesome. And I'll, I'll never forget where I was when I got the phone call to be on, to go on this tour. And, um, we had, my wife and I had just pulled into our driveway and we parked our suburban and we have three kids and they're all passed out in the back seat. And, um, I don't know, it's probably nine o'clock or something. And basically I hang up the phone and my wife was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, we, we just accepted a tour with Jason Aldean and we freaked out, you know, we were celebrating and then we were like, oh shoot, we gotta be quiet. Like, don't wake the kids up. And then we had a silent freak out and it was, it was amazing. Uh, so it's been a really cool experience so far. You know, Jason's like taking us under his wing and day one of the tour, he's like, what are you doing tomorrow morning? I want to take you golfing. And we just have been able to, you know, get close, but also he's just been so helpful uh, on the business side of things for me. Like just hanging out after the shows, I get to ask a million questions and he's kind enough to just kind of walk me through his experience so far. And I've learned a lot. Oh, that's amazing. Glad to hear that a legend like that is just so kind and has the oh, yeah. time and willing to give back, give back. And totally. Um, I was going through your Instagram. You've got two shows in Toronto, Budweiser stage. After the show, when you walk off the stage, what are the chances you're going to get into an ice bath? Oh, shoot. Well, the bus isn't here tonight, <laughs> which is where our ice bath is. Uh, tomorrow is pretty likely. Or Yeah, yeah. I feel like tomorrow night we, we might... Uh, might indulge? Yeah, I think so. It's kind of like self-torture, but I think it makes you tougher, so... And then we usually get good content out of it, like what you watch. So I saw your yeah. bandmates were doing some rapid rapid fire questions. Yeah. Uh, you said you love like stupid comedy movies. Love them. Yeah. Uh, favorite uh, comfort food or snack is fried chicken. And you guys have good fried chicken up here. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not as good as you know Oklahoma, but okay. we have some fried chicken up here. Okay. Um, and one thing I did have to ask you about is you said, or you were asked, uh, what's the biggest pet peeve of your bandmates? And you said the silly shows that oh they watch. Oh my gosh. What kind of silly Sad shows are we talking shows. about? I'm probably going to have like hate mail after this, but like South Park, okay. I can't stand it. I can't stand South Park. I just feel like I get dumber when I watch it. Okay. But I also appreciate the cleverness in the writing i just don't want to watch it like it's fine um what's the other one that uh it's always sunny in philadelphia is always on okay. and i actually do like that show but i just have to have small doses okay. like uh and then what's the cartoon uh uh rick and morty they watch that a lot i just don't think i'm big on like adult cartoons okay. i think that just I don't know. There was a season of life for cartoons, and I'm past it. I was really worried you were going to say something like Love is Blind or The Bachelor, and then I'd have to, you know, drop the drop the mitts and find it out with you. Yeah, no, my wife would, would be on your side with that <laughs> stuff. Uh, she loves that sort of stuff. But, no, I, I can you think of anything else, Bo? Any, uh, like, crazy shows that they watch consistently? Horrible documentaries. Horrible. We have one guy that was just like, "You gotta watch this rats documentary. It will change your life. You you don't you don't know how smart these rats are. You don't know how bad the the problems are." And I'm just going. So I gave it about 20 minutes, and then I was like, "I can't do it. This is, I just don't. We just have very different views of what's good when it comes to what we put on the TV. I'm yeah. I'm just like, I'd rather watch sports or, I don't know, live concert footage or. Anything other than adult cartoons? When it comes to sports, I mean, I know you've got your Dallas Cowboy, yeah, fan of those, yeah, uh, and live concerts. We've got to talk about the music that you're playing right now. Your major label debut album, Black Top, yeah. was at the beginning of the summer. Uh, I know that was 
quite a journey for you to release it. So how fabulous is it to sing those songs and have listeners and fans in the stands belt the lyrics right back out to you? Man, it's been so cool. You know, this th this particular record is such a unique timestamp for my life. And the reason I called it Blacktop is because um, I, you know, during COVID, I had moved from Nashville to Texas right before the world shut down. Mm -hmm. And I had kind of made it, made up my mind that I was going to my, move my family so that my kids could grow up around family, you know, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. And um, I knew that my music journey was going to be harder as a result. I was going to have to work twice as hard from Texas. And we just made that decision. We're going to move, work twice as hard, let God figure out the rest. And then the world shuts down. And I got faced with a choice, like, either file for unemployment or learn how to do something new. And so I went to work for a pavement company in Dallas, Texas. And it was one of the toughest parts of my life, right? Like where music wasn't an option to provide for my family anymore. And I'm doing something that I don't really know anything about. I'm not really passionate about, but I know that I, I need to show up and work hard and put food on the table. And um, that record probably is the longest shot in terms of what should have happened in the music world and that it should never have happened this way. And I'm so thankful that it did, you know, but to record a song like Wild Is Her while you're working at a pavement company and release it independently, the odds of that exploding and becoming a platinum, double platinum, number one hit, astronomical odds. And so this is just like the record itself is just a, um, it's like a, a little miracle to me that it it got me back to playing music full time. Uh, it got me on the road. It, it landed me a tour with Jason Aldean. It really 180. I was at a point in my life and my career where I was kind of like, man, maybe this music thing isn't going to work out the way that I had always hoped it would. And uh, not even through any certain failure, just through like the circumstances of the world. And uh, thankfully, things have turned around and, and music has for me you know, been on a great trajectory. So I I love my favorite part about it is is hearing fans connect with the music and sing it back because at the end of the day, I got into music because I love playing live music. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily the songwriting or the recording aspect. That's not what got me into it. It was always the live shows. And so to go play these shows and to hear people singing these songs back, that's that's always been the dream for me. Well, kudos to you for taking these curveballs that were thrown at you and putting your head down and just working hard and putting your family first and, and putting out that album. You can hear the stories and the album and the hard work that went into it. And speaking of the live music aspect, um, artists have to figure out their own signature style, right? Yeah. You've got Eric Church wearing the sunglasses. You've got Keith Urban with his perfectly always perfectly highlighted yeah perfect and it's always good when Corey kent walks out on stage you've got your bandana yeah how did you decide that that was going to be the Corey kent signature where did oh, that man. come about well i wish there was a better story for this so i'll tell <laughs> i'm just going to give you the real okay. story okay uh during covid before i got a job at the pavement company um which they gave me a company truck, which was amazing. Like I needed it because before that, all I had was a motorcycle. I had this little Indian scout bobber that I rode everywhere. And I mean, even two or three hour trips to the other side of the state, like I needed transportation. All I had was that, that bike. And so I started um, wearing a bandana over my face because if you don't want to eat bugs, that's a great way to keep bugs you know, out of your face. So I started doing that. And I remember I, I went down to Austin, Texas, um, to meet with my now manager, but we weren't working together at the time. It was kind of like feeling each other out of like, do we want to work together? Do we think this could work? And I rode my bike down there and um, I remember him going like, why do you have a bandana around your neck? And it's like, well, I just rode here and I didn't want to swallow bugs on the way. And he was like, you should keep that. And then I started to think about it and was like, country music is filled with you know guys that look like like sub sub six foot blonde hair dude like there's there's nothing that really differentiates me from the pack in, a, in trying to stand out right mm -hmm. and so I was like yeah I mean I think having something that's a little unique could really benefit like I'm not 
really the cowboy hat type and I'm uh you know we can't all look like Riley Green so you know just bandana was it for me man you know <laughs> uh, we're working on the the biceps but Riley's got a good head start for sure you're not going to be uh, in any underwear commercials like Riley Green anytime is he an underwear commercial He's in underwear. right now and I didn't know that I don't think it's Calvin Klein but it's something okay. like that he's shirtless i'll be like the costco version <laughs> so that i can get yeah yeah like, clip it, hit me up <laughs> Corey, thank you so much for taking the time yeah, to sit down you. with us Corey kent with pure country